morning calculus. I was sleepy and I forgot to do this. Piecewise functions is what we're looking at. We're just working through an example. 57 cents for a letter up to 30 grams. So we said as a piecewise function, the answer, whatever the mass is, the cost, 57 decimal five seven dollars. If the mass is zero up to but not including 30 grams. From this statement we said it's just equal to a dollar if the mass is 30 inclusive to 50. That's inclusive. Now, I was asking, if I say for these letters, what are the values allowed? We call that the domain. And in this case, what is the domain for letters to be applied in this piecewise function? No, zero to 50. The domain, yes. Here, the domain, I often use a D, but since it's the first thing. The domain, let's use uh, another system though. The domain, we'll use the uh, inequalities. Zero. Mass is between 0 and 30, or 50, sorry, inclusive. Now, grams, I won't write in the unit there, though, just, but that's it, grams. How would we graph this piecewise function? Now, I'm not going to make you make tick marks or anything like that, but I made this graph just the first quadrant because we have no negative weights, masses. But the x is like the m in this case, 0. And 10, 20, 30. Like I'm just doing approximates. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. I should have spaced mine out a little more. I don't, I don't care if you have to do it. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. label it as the m-axis, and this is words up and down mass and grams. Now the other one, the other axis I'm only going to, for the cost, which is the cost in dollars, I'm only going to label 57. <coughs> look like from a little green here. Zero to thirty, it's fifty-seven. In my graph, I didn't do a great job of this line, but horizontal. After that picks it right up and jumps. 30 to 50. So that is your piecewise graph. And there's a big jump, isn't there? Now, like I said, that works that way for income tax. There's pieces. I think you see why it's called piecewise. There's more than one piece to the graph pasted together. So sometimes piecewise graphs are discontinuous. You, there's a jump in them or something like that. Sometimes there isn't. They can be continuous. We'll try this next one in a second here. Okay? So I'm going to ask you to draw the graph of this function for your turn number three, but I'm going to use three colors, red, only for instruction reasons, green and blue. So you can really see which piece is which. Now the first thing I'm going to do is, on the first graph on the left, I'm just going to see what does the minus 1 look like if that was it, 
the only function. Because we have to understand them with no restrictions. So I'm going to just graph y equals negative 1. Not worried about this. We'll worry about that after. So if y equals negative 1, count your tick marks. That's what this graph is. Then I'm going to graph in green, 2x plus 4. So I'm going to go to positive 4. Then up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. That's a straight line. I could go down 2, left 1. You get the idea, down 2, left 1. And so on. So what is that going to look like? Oh, I hate freehanding this. So I'm going to just use this line here. I'm getting those corners right. Yep. Okay. Now, just to match my color scheme. This green. Is this green here, guys? No. You sure that's orange? Okay. Where's my green? Above here? Yeah. Okay. Color glowing. Not stupid, guys, I'm just color glowing. <laughs> Despite my disability, though, I've really done well for myself. But I don't get a look at a parking spot. Anyway. So that's the 2x plus 4, if we didn't worry about the domain restriction on the portion. And then, I hope you recognize a quadratic here. Negative meaning, can you see a negative sign? In front of this. Oh, sad face, right? That's what we're thinking. And let's think about a few other things. Minus 1, x minus 1 plus 7. What's that going to tell us? x minus negative 1 is what I should be thinking. Oh, no, no, sorry. x minus positive 1. So what's positive 1 and 7? Called the of a problem. What part? H, comma, k, yeah. What is that called? It's a V word? Vertex. The vertex. It's the turning point, right? In this case, Hashim is admiring your skills and memory. He's like, ooh, yeah. 1, comma, 7. That's where I'm going to start at. 1, 7. Then it's going down. Staircase, I talked about this the other day. As long as it's negative 1, if it was negative 2, it would double everything. I can go over 1, down 1, over 1, down. What? No. What is the staircase? Yeah, the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7. So down 3. So 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, it's off the charts then. And using symmetry. Freehand this, and I have a tough time with shadows and everything. Not too shabby. I'd be neat if I was doing it on page and pencil. Okay. By the way, if you forget about the staircase, like, is it one, two, three, four, or is it one, three, five, seven? Just plug in a few values then into the equation, and you'll quickly see it. I would think. Anyways. So I would actually put in 2 minus 1 all squared, apply the negative plus 7, 3 minus 1 all squared, and so on, okay? If you don't trust your memory. Now, that is all three chunks. Now this piecewise, we're now going to consider this. This means on the domain, so the first chunk, the red chunk, I'm going to just assign values of negative 1 for any x value up to but not including negative 3. I'll just put in, like if I said, what's the value when you put g of negative 5? You say negative 1. 
g of negative 3.0001, say negative 1, right? So up to but not including 3. I'm going to put down negative 1. So I'm going to put a hole there that's not including it. So I'm saying this portion of the graph I'm exporting. That's where that is. Then the green portion. Start at negative 3, go up to x equals 1. I know it's a straight line, so if you can't read your graph very well, calculate it. Then negative 3 times 2 is negative 6 plus 4. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. If you had a good graph here, you could see that though. But typically, you wouldn't graph at all anyways beforehand. So I close dot because negative 3 is included. When I put 1 into there, 2 times 1 plus 4 is 6. So, but that's an open dot. So this means this portion of the domain assigns calculations from the linear equation 2x plus 4. So. Do your best. Lastly, the blue equation. That quadratic is from 1 and higher for the x values. It just so happens 1 comes out as 7, and that's included, so I'll use a closed dot. And it should look something like this. That's the piecewise function. This is the graph I'm looking for. And the skill is, is just to know the other shapes and be able to fit them all together. So I don't know what this function could describe, but it's the skill that we're looking at. Now we'll wait for a second. So when we work backwards, we've got to recognize linear functions, etc. So the first portion, I guess I'll use a color code system. That's definitely linear. So let's see here. What should we call our function? f of x? OK, sure, f of x. f of x equals. Looks like it got three chunks. You could do this as two chunks, maybe. Nope, you could. I was just thinking. You could argue maybe this is from an absolute value of an equation, but it isn't because it has different slopes. So it's not, it's not easy to do it that way. So let's look at this first one here. There's a couple ways you could do this. What's the slope of that line? Well, it's negative one. The red portion, what's the slope there? Negative 3 is the slope, OK. I might have to do some figuring to figure out the line then, because I can't read directly. You could imagine it and see where it does cross the x axis or the y axis. But let's, I'm going to remind you of something. Slope point formula y minus y1. Oh, yeah, that's. There's y at up. I'll just do this. There's nothing wrong with that. This is the point slope formula. What would you call this if this was like y minus y over x minus x? It looks like a variation of the slope formula, doesn't it? I think you guys all know that formula, except you'd see it as y2 minus y1 over x2. If you isolate or get rid of the denominator, it becomes this point slope formula. And all you're saying is, is that I actually know one point. The y and the x there are going to stay as variables. So it's just a variation of that. And I can see the slope on this. I could choose any point that I'm pretty confident of. This point, or this point, this point, and so on. So a slope of minus 3. I'm going to plug that in there. Um, which point should I use? I'll use this point here. 
So that's negative 3 comma 2, right? Is that going to be good? Are you convinced? Always check. If this is your 0, by the way, this is 1, this is 2, that's and that little confusion before. So I'm going to use this point in my graph here. One, two, three, negative three, comma, two. So my y minus y is y minus two equals m. Negative three is the slope. It's a coincidence that I'm using an x value, negative three. x. Minus negative three is actually plus three. Now, you guys understand mx plus b form the most, so we'll get to that formula. y is equal to, I'm going to add the 2 to both sides and multiply through by minus 3, minus 3x, three, 3 times minus 3 is minus 9, plus 2. This seems to make sense for what we have. So if this graph goes down, yeah, it would be down here, minus 7 looks appropriate where that intercept should be. So that's the first chunk of my graph. Minus 3x minus 7. We'll use interval notation if x is an element of well, negative infinity, comma. Now this is a choice. It's up to you. It looks like the turning point is up to negative 2. Do we want to include negative 2 for this or for the next chunk? I'll include negative 2 on this. I'll use square brackets for this. Now the whole thing is, is that negative 2 can only belong to one portion. So if I use square bracket on this, it can't belong to the next portion of the line. That'll do in green. If I chose to use a round bracket on negative 2, I would have to use the square bracket on the green portion. It started at negative 2. Anyhow, this is a much easier linear equation. I can see that the slope is 2. So 2x, I can read the x-intercept plus 3 if x belongs to the set that starts at negative 2 but doesn't include it. And it goes all the way up to positive 1. There's a hole there meaning it doesn't include it. So negative 2 only belongs to one equation, belongs to the red. You cannot have square brackets on both of them. But negative 2 must belong to one of those sets. That's your choice. Then what I'll do in blue here is a quadratic. And I'm reading the vertex. The vertex is at x equals 2, comma, 1 for the y. So why not give it in that way? It appears to be going as 1, 3, 5, 7, I would assume. So I'm going to just kick it off with a bracket. x minus 2 squared plus 1. If x belongs to the set epsilon. Starting at, oh, square bracket. I made an error. one and higher. So there's a bit of skill involved there. Now one other thing. I'll just give you some practice on this. For this function, it wasn't asked for, but how do you use this function if you don't have the graph? So if I asked you, what is f of zero? You've got to look then. Zero is the x value. Which portion of this domain, oh, I see my disappearing angle trick, eh? I get fooled on that all the time. Which portion does that belong to in the domain? And I will rewrite my domain in a second here. fx belongs to. OK, hopefully that's not going to disappear. So zero doesn't fit into this. That only goes up to negative 2. 0 fits into this equation. So for this, I would do the arithmetic with 2 times 0 plus 3. So 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3 is 3. 
could look on my graph and see, yes, that is 3. If I told you, calculate. F of 2. You'd say, well, which portion of the equation, the piece of the equation, that belongs to the blue piece, because it's for 1 and up, right? So I say, okay, I'm going to put it in here. 2 minus 2. So that's the equation I use for numbers 1 and up. So I happen to get 0 plus 1. You guys see how you do this? And always be careful. So if I said f of negative 2, I'd say, well, I have to use this equation. And I put negative 2 times negative 3 minus 7 and figure out that. Okay? So that's how you evaluate, especially if you don't have a picture. Pause this. Nice while. Well.